Hello and welcome to Masterclass. I am Gatli Khomsomi. Working in a niche industry can mean there is not much room for creativity. Today we are joined by Monique Weinstein, a top geotechnical engineer who's taking us through the ways one could inject creativity and break stereotypes when working in a niche career stream. Monique, welcome to the show. Thank you, Katlecho. Now, Monique, you are a geotechnical engineer. Mm -hmm. What does that entail? Um, I for, uh, geotechnical engineering forms part of the civil engineering industry. Okay. I have my undergraduate degree in engineering geology, postgrad in geotechnical engineering. Okay. And basically, we look at everything um, that entails foundation en engineering for all aspects of civil engineering. Uh huh. Um, our, our primary focus, my primary focus, is a tunnel engineering and dam engineering for large dams in so uh, South Africa and Africa on the continent. Yeah. Well, that's very interesting. Now, one would think that's a very technical job. How important is creativity in the work that you do? I th uh, creativity is certainly important and um, is a daily process that you have to work through. Okay. Um, and certainly you can um, be creative on um, in a daily uh, in daily aspects, looking at uh, various ways you tackle projects, um, uh, the type of clients you have, the type of budgets you have, um, and looking at different ways to solve problems. But I'd say the most um, I, I'd say it's a lot been a long path, but the most creative and innovative thing that I've done with my really technical based, uh, technically based career mm. is bringing, um, uh, developing our geotechnical team um, at our company, Gib, uh, developing it from being a single person team, which was me in okay. 2007, and bringing that into a fully fledged geotechnical division, um, having a team of six, uh, top uh, geotechnical engineers and engineering geologists at our head office in Woodmead um, and having several site-based teams in and around South Africa and Africa. Sure, that's very interesting. Now, Monique, being a female in what is considered a predominantly male industry, what are some of the challenges that you've experienced, if any? Um, there have certainly been challenges. Um, it was quite daunting at the age of 22, being the only female, a, re um, a relatively young female um, in the industry uh, with very little female mentors. Um, that was quite daunting to take on at first. And then um, I'd say in my mid-twenties, once I realized that um, your capability and ability spoke for itself and that respect was earned even though there were some walls to break down once that was earned you could take your career wherever you wanted it uh, wherever you wanted it to go regardless of sex and sex then became a non-issue for me mm. so sitting around a boardroom table um, earning the respect of your colleagues your JV partners your clients um, that came on its own regardless of sex so i mean we were speaking earlier and you said you were once mistaken for the lady that makes tea but once you sat down at the table and started speaking people then actually realized what it is that you came to bring so a lot of the times women don't really have to fight so much about being females it's just showing your capabilities and then it's smooth sailing thereafter absolutely so yes twice um <laughs> twice earlier on in my career i was asked to make tea and then once i sat around the boardroom table they found it rather embarrassing um i've also been asked um i've been mistaken for uh the pa the secretary uh, because certainly when I, um, when I started in my career, there weren't many women um, at all. And uh, now you see a lot more women coming through the ranks. And in, in our company at Gibb, um, it's, it's probably about 30%. Sure. So a lot more than when I started. Uh, but yeah, that, uh, that, that has been, um, it, it has been a bit of a process. <laughs> I can imagine. But now, Monique, you speak about working with a team of six. How important is collaboration in the work that you do and just collaboration generally in the workplace? So that team of six is uh, purely our geotechnical, our geotechnical team. Mm. So that's really important, um, uh, working together, uh, collaborating together. We, um, we speak the same language <laughs> yeah. as a geotechnical team. 
but then you collaborate on the next level, which is in interfacing with your de um, design engineers. So on a multidisciplinary pro project like a pumped water storage scheme, which entails dams, tunneling, um, electrification, transmission, uh, electrical and mechanical, mm -hmm. um, ventilation, when you're dealing with uh, all those engineers and you have to interface, interface to get, certainly you have to understand one another. So then there's collaboration on that level. And then that goes further and having to collaborate on a joint venture level. Mm -hmm. So on many of these large projects, you'll have to, uh, you look to other consultants to bring in um, um, either a new skill or we simply don't have the capacity to run with that project alone. So there's co collaboration on that level and then ultimately collaborating with the client. Mm, mm. So certainly, and if, if, any, if any of those tiers don't function prop properly, you in for delays on your projects, efficiencies, if problems with efficiencies, problem with, problems with productivity. Yeah. We've seen it time and time again. So certainly teamwork and collaboration is, is a must. It's vital. Um, it plays yeah, a big part. And right from the bottom all the way up. All the way up. Yeah. If some young person is watching the show today and is really interested in what you do, we understand the academic and the technical skills that one needs to have. What are the, what are the personality traits that you need to have in order to survive in such an environment? I think um, being a geotechnical engineer in South Africa uh, is is different from operating um, in an international environment. In being a geotechnical engineer in an international arena, you can focus purely on your technical aspects. Okay. In South Africa, because of the lack of skill set, um, particularly in geotechnics, uh, you you almost have to be a jack of all trades, <laughs> where you focus on your technical. But there will be a certain point in your career where your managerial skills have to come into play. So not only do you manage projects from a technical side and on the contract side, you also have to manage a team, mm -hmm. resource a team, mm -hmm. understand your, your team, um, the softer skills, how to get them to work together to collaborate. Um, you also have to understand the big picture, the finances, the budget. So um, certainly going into it and at varsity level, um, it's not a career where you can, uh, certainly in the South African context, yeah. where, it, uh, where it's purely technically focused. You have to look at a bigger picture and I think um, that's where your adaptability yes. and um, being flexible has to come into play. Mm. Monique, we have run out of time. Any last words for anyone that's quite interested in this niche career that you're in? It, other than it's an extremely rewarding, a rewarding career and one that I've been most proud to be a part of, uh, particularly with the large projects that I've been involved with and seeing them come true, uh, through to fruition, there's, um, it, it's, it's extremely rewarding. Yeah. And I'd say if you're really interested, go for it. Winnie, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure and all the thank best. Thank you, Katlejo. And that was Monique Weinstein telling us what it is like working in a very niche market. Thank you for joining Masterclass from myself and the rest of the team. Goodbye. Yeah.